Okay, yeah, let's um Let's just do it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, make movies about gladiators. Boop. Whoop boop. Schlingy. Hello, all welcome to the dark room. I am Paul Mosa Hinton, the dude in the dark room, and it is uh Friday, March 31st. Makes it a photography Friday here in the dark room. So we're gonna be doing uh another session of fallout cinematography that we began last week if you were with us last week we started uh shooting some beauty shots some beauty rolls of the Meyer region in fallout 76 we stuck to one region uh, and got a little bit of a little montage of beauty shots landscape beauty shots some architectural elements associated with those landscapes and uh, tonight we're going to edit those in Final Cut. Very simple. It's going to be a very simple edit. Mostly going to be just organizing and then choosing the best moments uh, from the clips that we took last week. So it's going to be very, very simple edit. Uh, but since this is the first time we've done something like this, it's a very fitting, uh, fitting subject to do this with, I would say. That being said, this is the first time we've done a video edit shoot on the stream. And I, I, the reason I'm on so late is that I had to build uh, the scene to do the editing, which I hadn't set up, uh, and I thought it was going to be a lot easier. I always anticipate things taking a lot less time than they do. If you know me, you know I'm a very slow, methodical, meandering, deliberate person, and so it takes me a long time to pretty much do anything, including uh, setting up the scene to do this, but... Uh, forgive me if anything goes wrong or if anything looks weird. Also, let me know if anything looks weird or seems off to you because for all I know, uh, this is not going to work. I mean, it looks fine. It should, should be fine. Uh, but like I said, the scene is a brand new scene set up in Streamlabs to do this. We've never edited video like this on the stream. The most we've done in Final Cut was I created a presentation when we did the screenwriting stream like years ago now, is that years ago? Maybe a year and a half ago or something like that. The first, it was my first on-camera stream. Uh, the first time we worked in Final Cut for anything. But that was, again, just like a setup, more or less uh, uh, um, presentation of cinemato the cinematography history I've had, or the history in cinema that I've had in my life. And why I am writing that, that uh, submechanophobia uh, screenplay that we We'll work on again eventually. Um, but either way, let me know if the format looks weird or the the uh, layout looks weird or my audio seems off or whatever. Please let me know. Be, be nice about it. Don't be too too mean. I'm a self-conscious man, okay? Um, but like I said, we shot everything last week. And if you want to see that, definitely check out uh, last week's stream. I think I don't have it on. That's going to be a Twitch exclusive I don't think we were even on YouTube yet. This is also our second stream we're doing on YouTube as well as Twitch. So hello if you're on YouTube and you're a first-time viewer. Well, first of all, thank you, but also welcome. Welcome and thanks for letting me be here. Uh, but yeah, check out the Twitch. We'll have last week's uh, off-camera cinematography stream. But you can also check out all these other social media types and whatnot. Also, for this game... Since we're usually taking photos in-game with the in-game ProSnap camera, we are building a sweet website dedicated to the image capture in this game, and that's ProSnapCameraClub.com, so check that out. We'll probably pop these beauty rolls on there eventually. I haven't done anything with that website since I first got it up and running. Like I got it set up pretty close to something that is legible, and then I left it there, and I haven't touched it for a long time, so... That will be updated eventually, and that will uh, incorporate all of our image creation that we've done with this game uh, into one place. And, of course, documenting uh, the augmentation of our nice Argus camera, which is the camera we use in the game, blah, blah, blah. I say that every time. Uh, let's, just get to, let's just get to the edit. Like I said, this might be a little clunky since it's the first time I've done any of this kind of uh, photo or uh, uh, video editing on the stream. So, uh, hope everyone's having a good night. Hope you're ready for the weekend. I uh, hope you had a great week. Let's just take a breath for a minute and relax. We're going to forget all our troubles. We're going to dig into some creativity 
and have some fun doing it. Uh, I definitely recommend trying to grab some video clips of a game you love to play and uh, sharing them uh, with me. I'd love to see if you create any sweet, sweet cinematic video clips in the games that you love to play. Share them with me and all of my amazing friends over on our Discord because we have places for you to share all of your beautiful in-game camera work uh, regardless of what game it is. We have specific game uh, games that we like to play the most or we have been playing the most here, but I am I would love to know uh, more games that people love to shoot photos or video in. I'd love to see everything that people are doing with this type of image capture uh, in our virtual environments that we like to prowl around, prowl around in. Um, Powell skateboards. So without further ado, let's let's get in there. Uh, who knows? Who knows if this is gonna? I just like break the computer as soon as we jump into, as soon as we jump into the uh, the actual. So Gary, solid blanks, solid blanks. So yeah, this is the this is the screen. Hopefully, this looks like okay. Also, my my setup in my studio is like. Very, very, thank you, yes, thank you. Uh, the video setup here, the monitor setup here is really not ideal for what I'm doing. I should have two monitors up, which I have dual monitors here, but I'm also hoping that we get, thanks, Gare. This would be, I think, our final cut layout. I this, again, I did this, I did this kind of quick and it will evolve over time as we do this more and I realize what we should need. Thanks, Paxmore. Um, as and like uh, you know, I, I I because I had all of that space on the left side. That's why I'm leaving the chat there. Uh, otherwise, I would have I would love a full screen Final Cut video editor uh, on Streamlabs like this. But it it just it the aspect ratio is weird for me to edit in if it's full screen and lining up all this stuff. Thank you, Gear. Uh, all the other stuff added to the screen with me in full. It's just, it's just weird. So again, it will all evolve and we'll change things and we'll make it happen. I did it with the chat and the redemptions. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. There's the, there's a space for the chat. People can go back into the chat. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, let me know. I'd love that you let me know, but as we're doing this, keep, keep me honest with, uh, any, any issues you see in the layout or if I'm, if I'm not, able to show you guys something that I think you see or whatever, which is, should be very simple. Again, what we did is so simple in terms of video editing and how we're going to edit it. Very simple. Basically, we're just going to arrange the clips. Sweet. Thanks, Gary. Um, we're going to arrange the clips. Uh, we're going to cut the segments of the clips uh, that we like, our beauty shot clips. Uh, the, the best segments from those clips. And uh, that's about it. Add transitions. There's going to be a crossfade between each one because that seems fitting for this type of these type of shots. I like their streams as well. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I just think because we had all that real estate, that that dark real estate on one side of the screen, it seems it's, it's very nice <laughs> star wipe. Yeah, we can, we can play around with some cool transitions, some Star Wars wipes and whatnot. You know, it's fine. <laughs> it's free real estate, yeah. Also, it's kind of cool since it's, it's something like this where we're where we're kind of collaborating, hopefully on um, this project. It's kind of nice to see what people have said in the past or whatever, uh, since we're kind of on the same subject this entire time, rather than jumping between uh, different things throughout our playthrough of whatever game we're doing. So I hope that's cool. I hope that's cool. Um. Anyway. Glad y'all think this is decent. What I need to really remember is to not change the size of my Final Cut window because if you change the size of the window on my desktop is associated with the aspect ratio of the scene that I set up in Streamlabs. So if I change that at all, it will change how it looks in Streamlabs. It doesn't just keep the standard aspect ratio of whatever window you've chosen. Um, although I can move the window around my desktop without any issue. It's just changing the size and aspect ratio of the actual uh, window itself. So anyway, first thing we got to do, like I said, we shot this entire beauty shot uh, montage of some of my favorite spots in the Meyer region 
of the game. Oh, first of all, I do have my headphones so I can listen to our audio because there are some interesting audio things that occur that we will want to maybe avoid in the actual clips. Uh, every time, and I probably can change this when we do more cinematography, I can change the audio uh, mix in the game to avoid some of these issues. But when you get thirsty in the game, there's an audio cue. It's actually a very good game design element in, in this game and in a lot of games. You, you really do want a visual cue for whatever thing is happening, in my opinion, especially when it is to do with your status, your character status. Visual cue of that status, audio cue of that status, very important, especially for people who don't like a cluttered HUD uh, on screen and don't want those visual cues. Having audio cues is great. And this game does a good job of giving you an audio and visual cue usually a couple different visual cues as well um, along with that audio cue for what happened. So when you get thirsty, you get the dehydrated audio cue. And I think there was a couple times in these clips when that popped up and obviously we would want to avoid that audio because it's not going to be fitting. What we want is just the landscape audio itself crossfading between each segment. Uh, but we might have to play around with the audio. I don't know. I'm hoping to keep this as simple as possible because it's the first time we've done this. Um, so, okay, the first thing we need to do is try to get all the like clips um, side by side. Unfortunately, and this is one big issue with at least the workflow that I have currently to get these video clips onto my computer, um, or just the way that the PlayStation is designating the name of the files. These don't have any kind of consistency to the name <laughs> So I got them. They're in chronological order on the PlayStation. Uh, but once I bring them into the computer, the file name is not consistent at all. So they're all completely out of order, even though we shot these all in order and I wanted to edit them in chronological order or basically a chronological order uh, of these clips. And so bringing them in, the files got jumbled up and I don't know how PlayStation is choosing the name and maybe there's a setting. Maybe I can choose some kind of uh, file name structure that would keep it consistent, like clip one, two, three, four, five. That was, that'd be all I need. But it pops in these random letters and numbers. Ooh, wait. Also, by the way, cheers. Happy Friday. I'm drinking my beer, of course. My brewski out of my beautiful Nuka-Cola mug that, again, my buddy Brandon gave us to me. Thanks, Brandon. Love you. Oh, yeah. Got an IPA. A little bit of vodka in there, too. I don't know what that would be called, but it's delicious. Uh, so, yeah, grab a drink. Relax a little bit. Let's play. Let's have some fun. Um, and, the, yeah, the first thing I'm going to do um, is rearrange these so that they have hang on a second should I take off I should probably take off audio scrubbing how how the fuck do I do that dude I didn't anticipate I should know how to do that really quickly I like I like audio scrubbing on so that's I'll, I guess I'll leave it on if it bothers you guys let me know um otherwise I don't want to dick around trying to find where is it? Eh, we can find it in a second. Preferences, editing, general, playback, background render, which probably shouldn't be on. Background render, it's great, but it also is frustrating. Uh, is there no options for this? There probably is somewhere. Audio units, validate on next launch. Yeah, that's exactly what I would ask for. If I had the chance. Shit, I should know where audio scrubbing is. It doesn't matter. As long as it doesn't bother you guys. I didn't even think about that. Uh, wait, is this it? Oh, audio skimming. There, turn off audio skimming. Perfect. Okay. Nobody wants to hear as we go through these. Okay. Uh, so, Dolly Sods. It's so frustrating it did this to me. Why did you do this to me? See, look at this. This is so jumbled up and out of order. 
frustrating. Okay, well, that's the dam. Two dam clips right next to each other. There's the... There's somewhat of a Dolly... There's the, this is the Dolly Sod Wilderness and the Dolly Sod Campground, so those should be close together. Uh, Valley Galleria. Love that spot. There's the power plant. We got some clips of Tanagra Town. Obviously, one of the, one of the most fantastical locations in the game it's such a final fantasy square enix type vibe that i get from this vine vine elevated levit almost almost levitating island it's this is also one of the cool i think it's one of the coolest looking spots in the game and we got a real cool uh rare moment with a with a uh, with the mega sloth walking by Although I guess I don't know if that sloth is always there. I feel like it's not always there, but I could be wrong. Uh, let's see. We got a Scorch Beast attacking us. We got Boomer. I love Boomer. I don't know if you remember this, but I would, I, as a joke, I would always say, <laughs> in our first streams that we were doing, because we use some, we use explosives to launch our enemies, uh, so we, we pose them <laughs> in the air as they're flying, and we can take pictures of them, but. I, I would always say, like, boomers, welcome. Welcome, boomers, calling all boomers. Uh, because boomers are a Fallout faction from Fallout New Vegas. Okay, I'll tell you what. Right now, this this area, I think this is Blake's Offering, pretty sure, this Mothman location, not a good example of this spot because the Mothman isn't here. It would be a great shot if the Mothman had popped up and we got some beautiful shots of him, but I'm going to, I'm going to use, I'm going to exclude these. I'll put them at the very end. And if we really want to add them back in, we will. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that particular scene uh, was not ideal. So I'm going to move all those clips to the end and then we'll figure out what we want to do with those later. Okay, Valley Galleria, uh, Power Plant, Tanagra Town. This is the Scorch Beast clips, Boomer clips. There's Dolly Sod. Let's put that with Dolly Sod. There's our Scorch Beast again, Boomer. This should be also, we have to decide what clip we want to open the montage with. And this is one of my choices. Because it's just going to be a fade in, and then we'll fade in the title card, which will just say The Meyer, or Fallout 76, The Meyer, or something like that. And I do very much love this shot of the light breaking through this beautiful strangler vine covered tree, uh, which these, these kind of landscapes infest the uh Meyer region so i'm going to put that in the front so that we have that option then i have this overview of uh above from above berkeley springs castle as another option in the front i put this in here or it might have even just landed there when i dropped all the clips in but this is another good beginning shot first shot of the montage uh to kind of introduce us to the region. My only issue, the issue that I take with this clip is that we're actually kind of facing the Cranberry Bog. The Cranberry Bog is going to be to the south of the Meyer region. Uh, and so I'm kind of, I'm kind of shooting towards that and I should have been facing, I should have been on the other side of the castle shooting the opposite direction to maximize our view of the actual Cranberry Bog. I don't know where in this shot in the distance, it actually becomes the Cranberry Bog. I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head, but I see the monorail elevator in the distance on the right top corner. Um, so I know we're facing the Cranberry Bog, facing that south direction. Um, and I so I, I didn't think this was a good like introduction to the mire. And so this this shot and might end up being a good end 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 shot. We'll bookend it with this guy, and then this will be a front bookend, perhaps, but we'll keep those all in line. There's Dolly Sod again. Let's grab that and put that with our other Dolly Sod clips. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Also, my computer is slow as fuck. So if 
This is jittery and jumpy. It's not me. It is my computer. Uh, there's Tanagra again. Pop that with Tanagra. Wait, where's Tanagra Town? Tanagra Town. There's Tanagra. Tanagra. Scorch Beast Boomer. I don't know where we're putting that yet. Don't know where we're putting that yet. There's the Valley Galleria. Let's put that with our Galleria clips. Yeah, I can also expand this so we can see the thumbnails a little bit better of each one of these scenes. Tanagra, Tanagra, Scorch Beast, uh, Watchtower next to Dolly Sod. Actually, we can, let's start, well, we'll leave that. No, you know what? Yeah, we'll put that in front of the Dolly Sod shots because I know we shot that Watchtower first with that beautiful sunlight breaking through. These are going to be such beautiful little shots, man. And it's all about the lighting. The lighting in this game is just absolutely incredible. Okay, also, um, the, because, again, my chat window is weird. Actually, you know, here's what I can do. Let me put this. I can slide this over. Okay. I can't see, because I have such limited amount of desktop space on my actual desktop, on my working desktop, which, which again, I have two monitors, but I did want to save. Did I even finish explaining this? I was saving our second monitor so that hopefully we, we would finish this and we could maybe play a little bit uh, before we actually ended the stream. But uh, looking at the time and knowing how slow I am, I can almost guarantee we will probably just end up editing all night, which is fine. I mean, that's the point. Okay, what is this? This is like a, a short clip of n nothing. What is this little guy? We went from the, yeah, I think this little short clip. Yeah, this is like, that's right. I don't think I want those clips. Although that last little segment, when the Scorch, or when the uh, Scorch is shooting at those two right here, like that one, nah, nah, it's not going to be worth it. Deleted, deleted. And then what's this other tiny little short snippet? Damn, that actually is it. That little short boomer clip isn't bad. Ooh. And then I get killed. Oh, dude, boomer stood up? Whoa. I didn't notice that when we were playing. Well, that's a first. I've never seen that happen before. That protectron just stays on the ground like that. I've never seen it stand up. So obviously when it interacts with an enemy... It does something. That's so interesting. Wow. You heard it here first. Um, there's Boomer, though. So let's put that Boomer clip with Boomer again. Although, is that just the one? Oh, they're both right next to each other already. So that's fine. We got two Boomer clips next to each other. There's the power plant again. Let's move those next to each other. Um, Dolly Sod, Campground. I'm just going to get these the, all the Dolly Sod next to each other, and then we'll coordinate uh, the specific Dolly Sod area together. There's Galleria. Did we have a gallery? There's our Galleria shot. There's This is going to be the intro to the Galleria signage in front of the Red Rocket there, going down that road. There is our Tanagra Town um, Mega Sloth. It's kind of a short clip, but I do like the way that the light is breaking around the island itself with the sloth kind of walking towards it. So we'll keep that. We'll keep that in there. We'll put that with the other Tanagra. Oh, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I just going backwards? Okay, yeah, no, those are together. We're good. Okay. Boomer. Looks like that shot's nothing. We can delete this one. Little front side of Dolly Sod, but I don't know what I why I shot for such a sh short snip there. But we got these gulpers at the campgrounds. Yeah, it's kind of a cool shot. So that's Dolly Sod. Pop it over with the sod. 
this is the intro to the power plant. So that's definitely the front of the power plant. So, f like, imagine how much time we would save if these just came in in order. This is not this is not cool, PlayStation. Whoever decided on how the naming of our the files will be, you should be reprimanded and made to correct your mistake. There's this little tree house. I'll put that at the end. I don't think that that doesn't have a uh, a secondary shot to it, and this is a unmarked location on the map. So I'll keep that with our kind of rejects. This last little section here can be our rejects, and actually, let's separate that uh, with a a nice little gap. Oh no. It's too small of a gap. Got to widen the gap. Just so that we have that designated area that we don't want to. We can dump all our rejected clips down here. I don't want to delete them because maybe we'll find a place. Maybe. But until then, they will be, they will be uh, sequestered to this end of the timeline. And ch -ch 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 changes. Galleria, that's our actual signage on the building itself. Put that with our other Galleria shots. Let's shrink down the timeline again. Where did our Galleria shots go? There's our Galleria shots. The Galleria? This would be a perfect time to have a Robert Patrick The Galleria Terminator 2. Anybody? Anybody? He's asking the little kids on the side of the road, hey, have you seen, you seen this kid? I think they went to the mall. The Galleria. The Galleria? Why is this Dolly Sod clip right here? Dali Saad goes with Dali Saad. Dali Saad, uh, Dali Saad. But yeah, this would we wouldn't have to. We would have spent none of this time doing any of this had these clips been labeled in a decent way. There's the front of uh, camp. Fuck, why can't I think of the name of that camp? The defunct Brotherhood of Steel base. Why can't I think of that name? I don't know. Okay, here's two gallery clips side by side. Well, at least a couple of them are consistent. Uh, but yeah, such a frustrating, such a frustrating thing. It's it's difficult enough to get the clips off of the PlayStation onto the computer and then to have here's another signage shot from the Galleria. We're gonna have to look through both of those. Uh Berkeley Springs. The railway bridge at Berkeley Springs, which is absolutely gorgeous. There's another one of the reject clips. Let's put that in the back. We know exactly where that's gonna go right now. A rejects section of the timeline. Uh, probably same thing with this Mothman location. I felt felt like those Mothman locations were very just out of place. Like none of them. I think what we need to do is an entire Mothman location um, montage because the Mothman cultists they they speak a lot. So we're gonna have some weird dialogue just kind of like popping in which won't really fit. Plus the Mothman, we didn't get any clips of the Mothman. And and that is really what you'd want to see. So maybe after we do this edit, we got these two Brotherhood of Steel base. Why can't it camp? Why can't I think of that the name of that place? I, I, I there's too many areas in this game. It's actually not true. I like I like the extra the 
the many different landscapes that we can visit. Okay, here's that bear shot, which again, intro to the power plant. Put that in the front of the power plant clips. Valley Galleria. Interior. Put that with the Valley Galleria. Shots. Yeah, very frustrating. If this came in, we would already have just been able to just straight edit, so... Not sure why the PlayStation has to label each video clip with a completely different name. Like, there's no consistency at all. I mean, they it's like a letter and number common. I mean, you can see the the name, or can you see the name of these clips? This one's DZTK6629. Okay, so then the next one should be 6630. Nope. Nope, it's just going to be D-U-U-R-6571. Like, if there's a time stamp associated with that somehow, okay, but I don't see it. I don't know how, what the fuck that is. Never seen it before. Another Va Valley Galleria clip. Pop that with the Valley Galleria shots. Where'd you go? Big mistake. Dalisades. I think I took the most of the interior of that Galleria because, well, one, I just like malls. Okay, malls, malls are, well, they're fun. And if you're a child like I was, you can walk around and look at all the nice stuff that you could never buy, but you can feel like you're a part of it. So I got that going for me. Another Galleria interior. I think one of these was a still frame. Well, I think we accidentally captured a still clip of the interior. I'll pop that over there. We're going to have to go through each one of those. We got this giant hermit crab. Did we do anything with this guy? This might be a reject. There's the moon in that shot, but that this shot's not that good. Would have hoped that the crab would have moved a little bit and given us some... Dynamic movement to the frame, but I feel like, well, you know what, that, okay, that's not the worst shot in the world. This is right next to the power plant, and I guess if you know the game, you would know exactly what, uh, what we're looking at here, because this hermit crab is a uh, standard enemy that pops up in that exact spot here's our dolly sod campground uh, dining area which also serves as the uh, area for our uh, workshop thingy <laughs> whatever it is that gives you the option to take over the workshop i don't know what you'd call that work workstation workshop workstation stuff this is Dolly Sod campground stuff. And then we have these beauty shots of that tower. Which, where did we... Let's see, that's the one tower. There's Tanagra again. Let's put Tanagra with Tanagra. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. Okay. Where'd Tanagra go? Tanagra, is it before Dolly Sud? Before Dolly Sud, before. Before the power plant? There's, there you are. There you are. There you are. Okay. Are we in relative. Relatively correct order here? Not really. Okay. This death claw, I can tell you this. This death claw is supposed to be over by the. Dam. So that's where we find it. Where'd our damn clips go? Where the hell are those damn clips? Right over here. Damn, damn, damn. Damn it. Okay. Um, let's just go with what we said earlier. Let's have this light, moonlight, Menskin breaking through the trees. That can be our intro shot to the mire, maybe the push in. We did a couple different flavors of camera movement 
for that intro shot. And then we can do this over overview of the Berkeley Springs area as our outro shot. I think that's not a bad idea. Um, are those in order? Okay, we're open with that. I like that we're going from break through the trees to a nice sun break through the trees in that tower. Maybe we'll keep that in order like that. There Wasn't there another tower shot in here somewhere? I thought we grabbed a couple of that tower. There's the Galleria, 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 Galleria. Okay, here's that tower shot I was talking about. Between the dam and Dalasads. Nope. Should be two right next to each other. Butimus. Absolutely butimus. Okay, I think that I think that should have put us in order now with all these clips. Wow. And if only they could have just chosen to have every video clip you take have consistency in how it's uh, named, uh, we wouldn't have to do this, but nope. The intelligent people over at Sony said, well, we could have some kind of a consistency to the naming here, but I think we should just throw random numbers and letters into the files every time you create one, thus making them unique. No, no, you've just screwed us all over. You've screwed us all over. And maybe, maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe there's a way to choose that. If any any other type of video recorder or camera, which is a video recorder device of sorts, you could say, right? You always get a, ch a choice of how the file structure and how the file naming is designated. You always get that choice, or at least I have always had it in every every camera and video recorder I've ever used. So I don't know where they came up with the choice to do this. Cause Sony create Sony makes cameras. They make cameras. Like there's not any, any kind of crosstalk between camera division, either cinema or still camera or the video game department. I don't know. I don't know how that works. It's corporates. It's corporates. Other corporations being all corporation y, you know. Where are we going to put this Berkeley Springs bridge cat? The bridge shot, the I think that could go. Let's put that close to the end only because I think the only other clip we got of Berkeley Springs. Uh, well, this is I'm sorry, that's Harper's Ferry. What am I talking about? Um, or is that the only Harper's Ferry shot? Let's just start there. Because maybe that's a reject. Also, we have to put this... Where's our battle clip from... From that event. We wanted to get... I thought it was a cool shot, this shot of the Scorch Beast. Let's put those together, though. Where's the other one? There's one other Scorch Beast shot. There's that death claw. A couple of them more menacing enemies, I think, are great clips to have. And that's what we've captured. We have the Mega Sloth, we have a Scorch Beast, we have a Death Claw, and then we have the giant hermit crab. All of the larger, more difficult enemies. Uh, and this is a more difficult area. The mire is definitely a like high-end area of the game, not intended for beginners I would say um, is that the only clip for the no no okay they're right here next to each other okay put those put those side by side so they don't get lost I don't know where we're gonna put those yet I again I I, I wanted to cut this all together in chronological order but I also now now I can't remember when we shot each clip so we'll just go by what time of day it is and then we can put each segment next to each other, but let's just go clip by clip now and we'll edit together the best portions of each one of these, or at least get each, each clip cut down to its best portion. So like I said, this would be, it's going to fade in. And then as the light breaks, we'll have it say the mire. I feel like this, 
this end portion over here once we get yeah once we okay yeah i move over we wanted to really see that light breaking around the tree trunk the mire yeah it's gonna be that section probably right there let's cut up to that point none of that beginning shit was useful the mire that wasn't bad. Okay, let's see if I did anything better or worse. Man, the sound in this region is great. Let's just watch the whole thing. Okay, then we do a push in. Okay, well, I'll cut. Let's cut. Start it there. Okay, I'll do five seconds on that. Here, actually, let's get in a little bit closer. What's wrong? Come a little closer. <laughs> Star Fox 64. Duh. Okay. Yeah, I like that. This segment, right there, as you see the light break around the tree, beautiful. And then we can use that for one shot, and then we'll continue this clip, and we'll get one of the push-ins. Actually, I can do this without... Yeah, let's just get one little push in as well, and then we'll see what we prefer once we see those side by side. And I'm not going to use both of those. Let's see, right there is about fine. I'd say I'd say we're going to keep it to about four to five seconds for each each shot. Three seconds is a little too quick. Six seconds is a little bit too long. And I'm not going to combine these. I'm, we're going to choose between one one of those, either, either the push-in or otherwise we will see. Oh, see how beautiful that looks. Man, yeah, the lighting is just absolutely gorgeous. Let's see. Quickly. Okay, I go side to side, and then I go in and out. And then this one, we kind of rise up and fall down side to side. Up and down. I think those rising and falling shots, though, are, are a little... a little too quick because you don't have as much... Uh, difference in the pressure sensitivity with the triggers as you do with the joysticks using the rise and fall motions don't seem to be as uh, customizable the speed of those don't seem to be as customizable so let's just say we won't use these rise and falls we will only do these side to sides which means I'm going to want to cut from this side because these are the same towers, the same watchtower. We'll want to cut from one side to side to another side to side rather than a different uh, direction of movement. 
And I almost, let's see, that looks great. I like it here when we also add a pan during the movement, though. The more dynamic, generally the better. Let's cut that there. I mean, that's not always true. It depends on the scene. Depends on what you want. Okay, don't listen to me. Ooh, yeah. So that was 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Yep, right about there. Should be perfect. And I'll just make that decision that we'll save that. Now, what's nice is that, obviously, with our non-linear linear editing system that is pretty much all digital... Uh, editor systems here we we can always bring back as much or as little of that clip as we want without very much penalty we don't we're not rendering we're not needing to render okay so that's the rise and fall movement rise push in tilt up fall down okay we don't want any of that We want a similar movement to our wide shot of this particular subject, which is this watchtower, Dolly Sod's watchtower, whatever it's called. Also, which direction are we moving? We're moving left to right, so let's make sure we're going to include a left to right close-up. Ooh, don't you want to climb that staircase? Oh, my goodness. And that sound right there, too. There's that big creaking. I see it in the audio waveform. Let's just start it around that moment. Oh, yeah. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. Okay, that's fine. I love that clip. Dunzo! Now it's raining here. I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if it's gonna be as jarring as I'm thinking. Hey, bees, what's up, buddy? Doing some video editing tonight. Cheers. I don't know if, if you were around last week, but we shot some. Uh, we shot some cool video clips for our little video montage of the Meyer region, and we're just cutting it together. Just chilling. Cheers. I'm taking a, taking a moment, taking a sip. Got plenty of clips to get through. Oh, did you really? Hell yeah. Awesome. Currently, we got... Okay, this is as much as we got so far. Let's just watch... Here, let's keep it. Let's keep it with the, the left to right movement. We have this clip here, which is a push in, but let's put that since it, we separated that clip. We'll put that into our reject pile at the end of the timeline. Or actually, you know what? I can omit this clip completely. I think I know that we're gonna end up using that side to side. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. We'll go with the push in, and then that will go into our left to right of the tower shots. I think that's going to be good. Change the camera movement a little bit. MCB's 32. I got that carry gets and froze. Oh sh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh man. If only this game would not, uh, <laughs> be so glitchy. And we will, again, we're going to add, Ooh, you know, here's the thing we have to keep in mind is that, if we add the transitions, it's going to cut down on it's going to cut down on the actual total time of the clip. So, uh we'll get the clips kind of set and then we might just have to add a little bit more time on either side to get our uh our crossfade properly fit into it. Okay, so this is where it would go, you know, it fade in the mire, right? Boom, pushing in. Boom, crossfade into that, which we I'm not going I'm going to add the tra transitions at the end. But that cut felt pretty good. And then we have uh again, camp. Why can't I think of the name of this 
location, man. Is this blank? I'm blanking on it. I don't know why I don't know this. I go here all the time. I don't know what I'm what I'm doing. What's this loud point right here? Ooh, gunfire. Oh, that's right. Okay, so that's when the, the ghouls start getting attacked. All right, so this second clip, let's delete that one. We don't need that. We'll just keep this guy in there. Boom, pan. I love that. I wish there was, I wish the lighting was coming from a little bit further to the camera left because then we would have had the light breaking through the trees diagonally from top left to bottom right, which would basically lead us into the actual uh, campground or the uh, camp itself. Why can't I think of the name of this place? It's going to bug me, dude. I'm, gonna, I'm looking it up. Cranberry Bog. B-O-S camp. Oh, wait, no, this is... A, what am I talking about, dude? Meyer... Meyer BOS camp. Uh, what would be showcase? Ooh. How to join the Brotherhood's Camp Venture. Thank you. Thank you, Camp Venture. Okay. Why couldn't I think of that? Very silly of me, but what do you want me to say? There's so many regions and areas and there's like a bunch of different camps and my head doesn't do well with very closely similar names and titles and such almost the from the, the almost the first shot of that clip is almost perfect There's like a bit of like a loud pop right at the beginning. But the audio will crossfade as well. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. And we have that beautiful bird chirping in the background. That's freaking awesome. Uh, and then we got Tanagra Town clip, which did we not organize those together? I guess not. Let's put that back with our other Tanagra Towns. Where's our Tanagra? All the way over here. Man, where's our Tanagra cup? It's just Tanagra. Tanagra, Tanagra. Okay, so they're just like, they're just separated by a couple. Couple spots. Tanagra. Yeah, dude, Boomer. BDS Boomer. Darmok and Jalad. Gary, did I show you? Were you here when we went to that spot in Tanagra Town? Because there is, I don't know if, if you remember, it was very early on in the streaming, in my streamings. But the one of the first things I think I did was I we went to Tanagra Town and I I showed the little chalk on the wall i forget okay well it's gonna we will be talking about that because of the videos that i have planned for our entire fallout 76 package that we've been working on we have some builds i have some funny builds some contemporary cultural media builds associated with this game and a, a jean-luc picard build is one of the well well fleshed out builds that I've that I've created and it's very fitting because we can visit this location with our Picard build it's also very specifically Picard from uh, Star Trek First Contact build <laughs> and specifically specifically the moment when he goes into the holodeck and uses the Tommy gun. So it's Tommy gun tote and Picard build is the, 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 the end of the end and beginning of that build is Tommy gun, Tommy, Tommy gun tote and Picard. And so we'll visit, we can like visit that location. Once we get into that stuff, 
We can like visit that location with our Picard build eventually. Eventually. And of course we have our photographer build, which is the, the main build that we're working on. Okay. I really love. That's a great clip of that. Ghoul walking by a boomer, but I, I don't really like. Oh, and those wind chimes. I have. Oh, and then I get, yeah, that's right. This is where I get killed. <laughs> and then Boomer stands up. Why does Boomer stand up? It's so cool. I'm curious. I might have the only, I could have the only clip of BDS Boomer actually standing up. Because it, the ghoul crosses his legs here and he doesn't do anything. He's obviously not making any impact there. But then for some reason, after I go down, then once the ghoul crosses into Boomer's little area, he seems to be affected by him. That's so interesting. That's just game mechanics that just feel strange, but whatever. Um, we don't need that clip, though. Whoops. We don't need that additional side of boomers it's just the it's just that right there and also i think when the that might be because the ghoul makes that noise i feel like that's them taking some kind of damage or at least something in the world having an effect on them and i think it, that might have to do with my mutations that i have uh, because i have plague Plague, what's it called? Plague something? I should know this. Plague Walker? Plague Walker? Plague Walker. Plague Walker is a very interesting mutation. I still don't know how well it works or if it's even working at all, but it definitely has an effect on enemies. The only thing I really notice is that if you get close enough to an enemy and you have pretty much any status effect, even over-encumbered or thirsty or hungry, it seems to include that negative status ailment in what can be applied to an enemy with Plague Walker. And so if something gets close to me, all I notice is that then they immediately go into caution because they've taken some kind, even if they don't take any hit point damage, they take a status effect ailment of some kind. Uh, and then they know that I'm there. So it, if anything... It just affects negatively how sneaky I am. But it doesn't actually do any damage to the enemy itself. Okay, so we had that... <laughs> Unit is immobile of Boomer. Oh. BDS Boomer. Okay, let's me get this push in. Changing our field of view. Yeah, I wanted to emphasize some of those ghouls running around in the background. Oh, right here. Yeah, this when the ghoul's walking and then the two ghouls kind of cross over like that. That's probably one of the best moments of that clip. So let's get that. We'll start the clip here. I, I would love some of Boomer's dialogue to pop in, but I think it's going to be a little jarring to have that just randomly, random audio dialogue popping in when we have very little. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Let's stop it there. And then again, we're just getting these down to bite sized fragments so that they all can flow into each other and then we can extend uh the clip or retract the clip a little bit power and all i'm actually really glad we got a scorch beast shot here too although i did wish i had lined up to get a good flying in shot and landing shot but again that's a little too in for, for what we're trying to do. These beauty scapes, these beautiful landscape shots. 
Well, what the hell was that? Oh, it's a different clip. Um, okay, I think that first one is not really much in here. Maybe no. See, I didn't have the room. Okay, so I don't need that first part of that clip. We don't need this one. I don't know. I taking some radiation damage. Yeah. I don't know if this clip's going to fit in at all. What we what we would really want for something like this is another player interacting and then doing some combat. Yeah, see this didn't work out. I didn't like any of that. I didn't even notice a moment in there that looked beautiful to me at all. I was excited because again, we we shot a lot of the the large creatures of the region, um, and a, a, a scorch beast added in with those large creatures would be great. But the, the if the clip sucks, don't put it in. You don't want filler shit, dude. One thing I always try to tell myself with any kind of portfolio or showcase of any of my work is like, don't use filler shit. Don't use filler bullshit. If you know a clip sucks, if you know a shot just sucks, just take it out. Why Why include it? It's just bringing stuff down. So yeah, why? even though, again, I very much wanted a Scorch Beast included for the large creatures of the region that we could fight, but it didn't, it didn't work out, so it's fine. Do I care? No. Am I disappointed? No. Not at all. Heh. I don't care. I don't care at all. I'm not hurt by it or disappointed or sad or nothing. Um, okay, so we have we have our mega sloth. I do love that he's just kind of a silhouette in the distance walking past those those beautiful trees. So it would definitely be a, a portion right here, I think, when he's walking through that little area. And we have the beautiful light breaking around the island itself. Let's start the clip there. And then we'll move it into maybe just as he crosses over this other tree, like right around there. Use that, and then is there any other moments in here? No, that's the best of those, so we can delete that as well. You're gonna try something, try everything. This is an experimentation stream. There's nothing we could, nothing you or I could do wrong. And if if it goes, if anything goes down or whatever, we'll just we can come back in. Every you're allowed permission granted. Oh no, everything got fucked. You blew it. Okay, tilt down here. It looks like we're pulling back too. Tilt down, retract. In-game art. Dude, try all the Oh. <laughs> Is that what you try? Oh yeah, let's push in past this little tree trunk. Boom. Here's what we wanted here was oh, it didn't work. <laughs> It's okay. I am a political refugee. Change the category. Oh, I can definitely change because I put I dude, I debated that as well. I was like, should I make this a Fallout 76 stream or should I make it an art stream? What do you think? Should I do should I do art stream? I wasn't sure. I was like, Egh. I was like, is it, is it Fallout 76? Is it art or? Okay. I love this. If I didn't have to kill your flow, it would have been cool. Oh, right. Yeah. But do you think I should change it to art? Try art. Let's do art, dude. I can do that. It's like the easiest thing to do. I'm pretty sure. And also this is a good, again, good challenge. Um, 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 Ooh, well, here's the thing. I can change it. Let's see. I'm going to change it on Twitch. 
Yeah, let's see if this let's see what happens. If I break it, whatever, I'll be right back. IRL creative done. Okay. So did that change it for you? Here's the th thing. It seems like the the Twitch info supersedes the Streamlabs info. So if you change it in Streamlabs, it doesn't make a difference until you change the actual Twitch stream info. That's what I've noticed. That worked? Okay, sweet. Yeah, we're in art now. I'm... I, I'm an artist, okay. I'm an artist, and I, and I, 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 I you must respect my art. Um, I'll tell you what. This moment right here, as we tilt down and pull back, and the first of all, I love the way the light blooms as the flare is kind of introduced. That's pretty cool. And then also we have our beautiful mega sloth associated with that so let's actually uh, right before the mega sloth's head pops in the frame we'll start it there oh yeah kind of like that kind of like that that could be fun and then i think after that point the mega sloth is obscured by the fence so that's basically the best clip we could hope for Right about there. That's a good spot. Enough time. Again, we can always adjust these clips if we want to. No biggie. No biggie. Okay, wait. I need to rearrange my screen again. Yeah, it sucks. I need to get... I should have... I should have... I should have made the decision to not actually play the game. Because I saved... Again, I have the second monitor set up. So if we wanted to jump in and play, we could. Uh, but now I'm regretting that. Because I can tell we're not going to get to any kind of gameplay. We're just going to be editing tonight, which is fine. That's the whole point. Um, but I definitely could have used some more <laughs> screen space to get all this done. It's fine. It's fine. I love the challenge. Okay, good clip there. And then what's this? This looks like a similar angle or a similar uh, position. I do like that push in, but it's not going to be as interesting as the pull back with the with the with the sloth in there. So we can just delete that clip completely. Or actually, I guess I could put that with the rejects. I should be adding. I really don't like deleting anything from my timeline. I really like keeping even reject like almost a, even if they're like a hundred percent rejected clips. I like keeping them stashed. And then if I do want to pull anything back in, it doesn't have to re-render anything. Although these MP4s I have here didn't need to render, which is great. Or if they did need to render, it happened almost instantaneously. Drink water. I can drink water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keeping me honest with my hydration. I love it. Okay, sweet, Tanagra Town. And then we have almost a completely different moment in time of Tanagra. I, I feel like... I feel like this isn't going to work with the difference in time of day with those other clips, though. That almost looks like a completely separate moment itself well actually okay well mm. and anyway that's very similar to our first clip here well you know what but it might actually transition with this one better depending on if we choose to, maybe we'll only use either one or two of one or the other of these two
Yeah, so let's just find the best moment here and then go from there. We'll add those two together. Again, I do very much like that moment when we have the distant, almost silhouette of the uh, sloth walking across those distant trees and the light breaking around the island. So we can kind of start it there. Wait, that's a little bit too far. If we're looking at that, if we're looking at the sloths walking, we want to we want to see a little bit more of his. Let's yeah, start it right there. Yep. I kind of like that it's just very distant subject. And then we're going into the power plant, Thunder Mountain. We have our dead Yao Guai corpse push in here, which is very fitting. If we're entering a new location, a push in feels right. Similar to oneself approaching that, that area. Okay, not bad. Like I said, definitely definitely going to use the push in, but we changed up. Not that this isn't a bad shot. This is making it a little bit more about the corpse itself, which isn't too shabby. Mm. But again, this is kind of supposed to be the intro to the power plant, so it... Not that that was a bad shot, but I, I think I think a push in... Mm, no, I don't know, though. The lighting got way more dynamic in the second shot. It's very, very muddy. This whole first clip is very muddy. And then this one, we get the contrast that we really want. I really don't mind that camera movement, too. So actually, we'll stick with that. Dude, I changed my mind. Get rid of that first one. Let's just use this shot here. Yep. Just a little bit of moonlight breaking onto the bear's actual corpse. Start it there. It's about as much as we would need. Beautiful. Ooh, yeah, and then we kind of like push in, tilt down from the moon. Some of these shots are maybe a little bit too slow, but that's why we have multiple clips so we can cut between. I do want to see that moon, though. The moon and the tilt down is great. Let's start it here. Hang on. 1-1,000, 2-1,000, 3-1,000, 4-1,000. One, Just about there is great. We didn't do that many shots of the actual power plant. Really, each location, each location could have its own little montage and doing it by region is a pretty daunting task. M maybe the ideal would be getting one good clip of each spot and then adding it all together, but uh, we'll stick with what we got for now. Push in, tilt down, beautiful. Oh, that one firefly right there. Definitely have to have the section where that firefly is glowing a little bit, or at least one or two fades. Heard that little scorch screaming in the distance. Is that the only fire? No, we got, oh, these other fire. Oh, two fireflies. Oh, even better. Fly across the moon. Oh, why didn't I get it flying across the moon? Silly boy. 
I think that's going to be it. Those two fireflies flying right in front of, or at least near, near the front of the moon. Widen out a little bit. Nah, it's going to be that one with the two fireflies in it for sure. Unless like five pop up. Of course, I'd love the whole sky flooded with those or at least have several in the frame. Yeah, this is none. No fireflies, no go. Nope. No, 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 no. We saw where we wanted it. Two, yeah, these two fireflies right here. So we can trim it at least up into that point where they come in. And then determine the best moment here. Okay, that was a rapid movement. We don't want that. That's just us repositioning. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, actually, 1, 1,000, 300,000, 4, 1,000. Not bad. Okay, I'm down with that. And believe me, when we add the transitions, the audio crossfading is going to make this seem way more smooth. You would not even believe how much more crossfade the audio or crossfading the audio is going to make in how fluid the transitions become. I think you can forgive a hard cut in a montage like this if the audio crossfades. But if the audio doesn't crossfade, it's very jarring. I mean, they're both pretty jarring jumping between uh, especially different scenes. Maybe the two pairings of shots can go quickly cut together okay. Uh, but for the mood and the tone that we want to set, crossfade, slow crossfade between both the video and audio is going to be our best bet. Imho. Imho. And then, okay, I saw exactly where I wanted this clip to begin and end, like right here. That last moment, I think. I'll just watch the clip. Yeah, I don't like that composition on that one here. The moon is a little bit closer from left to right with the... Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let's start with the tilt down there. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand. Butimus. And our Valley Galleria at s sunrise. And like I said, these I'm not putting these in order. Each each location, we'll edit these, and then we'll kind of move each location's segment into its proper area. Although it looks like we're going to be going between different times of day for each location anyway, so we'll see. Let us see. We shall see. Also, I kind of doubt we're going to finish this tonight. <laughs> Seeing as I'm going very slow, we have so much more to do. <whistles> yeah, because I want to wrap up probably around 11. Um, so let's see how far we get in 20 minutes. If we didn't have to do that stupid rearranging because of the file naming convention that they decided to use, that'd be fine. Okay, push in here. Oof, that shot's great with the rising sun. I would have been happy with that if we just just that one that one shot we got was fine. Pull back and tilt down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not bad. Mm, but I do very much love the sun 
peeking around the red rocket rocket. The uh, titular red rocket itself. You try to use this tree to reveal the sign. Yep, I remember doing that. Yep, yep, yep. Reveal the Valley Galleria sign. Did get very, 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 very low contrast here compared to that first section or the first clip. A little bit flared out. But then just the revealing of the sun from behind that red rocket is beautiful. All right, so let's cut, let's just cut the two segments together and we'll see which one we like better. I do like, I feel like the color and contrast here is much better in this first shot. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. Okay, so that's the push in that we would want. Again, we're entering this location, the Valley Galleria, so a push in does feel fitting. Now, I'm not tied to that. And then how, where was that reveal of the actual sun? first section here hmm started right about there one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand eh I don't know how much I liked my camera movement there kind of do another push in while we reveal so let's clip that first section and then we will, let's just do another clip as we're pushing in to reveal the sun here. Take out that large chunk and then we can have two different, two different flavors of that sun reveal. Boom. And push in with a little bit of a reveal. Doesn't feel like as much, it's because the reveal is not as quick in the second one. So it doesn't feel as dry, yeah, as, mm, yeah, see, that might be a better version. But you know what? I'll keep both in there for now. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. I feel like you can feel the movement better in this first one. Although I also adjust my camera direction in that first clip a little bit. Yeah, see, I go from, I go from, mm, yeah, I go from moving camera left to right to moving, or right to left to panning right. Let's just stop that when the direction of movement changes. It's going to be a shorter clip, though which is fine. But that might screw us when we add the transition. So it might end up being that push in. And then the sun reveal here of the gallery sign itself. Kind of hard to read that signage. This might be a throwaway. The Galleria, because we have the flare on the right side of the frame, you can read Galleria very, very obviously. But Valley, it got very, very, very crushed. Those dark areas of the Valley sign itself got very crushed. So let's put that whole thing. And we already had the signage saying Valley Galleria. So the fact, and, and it's in the background in this shot, the actual on building signage. In, is in this shot too. So let's actually not double up on signage shots. Let's actually just put this guy in our rejects pile at the back of our timeline in case we decide we want it again. But I can guarantee you we won't. I can almost guarantee that. Garantados, the great Mutado. And then we're on the interior of the Galleria. Uh, 
Although, let's see. Let's watch all three of these. Push in there. Sun's rising up. Gorgeous. <laughs> this music inside the gallery is so creepy to me. Okay, there's that Scorch walking by on the interior. That's where we wanted to start. We're always looking for some kind of dynamic movement accompanying our camera movement. And so when we have those enemies crossing through the frame, it's going to add the dynamics that I would like. Yeah, I think it's just that first guy across that bottom right side. And this is where this in the interior, because there's music playing now, and it's going to be a very obvious break in the actual timeline of that song, we'll probably use the audio of one of these clips across the entirety of the, in, the interior shots, because otherwise it's going to be crossfading at different times in that tune and it's going to feel really weird. So we will not. And it, Oh, that's a kind of interesting too. I didn't notice that. The central location around the fountain here in the mall is a lot louder in terms of music than the, uh, extremities of the mall that's kind of interesting well that shot sucked can delete that one wait how actually wait, wait wait yeah no this shot's not good i think i realized here that we could wait for those scorch to walk through the frame kind of yeah we don't need that clip that's nothing that's a throwaway the interior i shot this is the most we shot i don't know why i spent so much time in there I think I just was really hoping to get those scorched walking through the frame in a desirable way, and I could not, could not achieve it. Do, 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 do. You know what it reminds me? That music is just straight up exactly what is at the end of The Shining. You've always been here. I know he doesn't say it at the end of the movie. That's not at the end very much, but it's, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's in the picture and he's just going through the picture of Jack Nicholson just chilling. Ooh, there was that, there was that walking across. That's what we wanted. I didn't see it at all in this first clip. I'm looking for that Scorch walking across the bridge in the far background because you get the atmospheric, the distant atmospheric conditions. Might not make sense for being inside a mall to have that happen, but that's fine. Um, but that is where you can really notice. It's the most contrast between the silhouette of the Scorch walking by and the background. And I did not get that in that first clip. So let's move here because I saw it coming in here. There he is. And unfortunately, I didn't have my camera set when when he actually showed up. I remember waiting for this guy. God, and I'm still moving the camera here. I'm like micro adjusting my composition. Ah, that shot might not work. Yeah, that's why we stayed here so long. I remember waiting for that guy to walk by and give me a good silhouette walk by on that bridge. And is that the only time we got him? I guess so. That was really what I was looking for, though, right here as he walked by in that distance. I guess I could... I just... I. F I feel my camera bumping around because I try to micro adjust. Hang on. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. 
Okay, maybe we can get a, one clip out of that. Maybe. It's going to, again, it's going to be based on how the crossfade affects the actual clip. Yeah. Like the same shot, just, just, just waiting for that guy. The standard Bethesda creaking and crackling of an interior. Very ominous. I like it. Da, 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 da. Okay, well, let's say we don't want to even use... Let's just grab a section of this clip without any of those scorched walking by because if nothing else, we want a good little push in on the interior of this of this mall. I like that shot. And then did we get anything else interesting in this clip? Nope, that's where I pull back. Ooh, there's a guy walking by during that pullback. That's not bad. Okay. Start it right when he reveals himself from behind that pillar. And then he kind of stops. That's great. Okay. So he's walking in the distance there, but he's walking towards us. I do like how he walks through the light when they go through that little doorway. Yeah, I remember waiting for like just the right moment. This is this is not the spot to wait too long, buddy. Okay, we got that. Let's delete the rest of this clip. Pulling back again. Yeah, I see the guy walking through the doorway. That is kind of nice. They go from being almost overblown in terms of the light hitting them. And then they walk back into the shadow. Kind of makes it an obvious element to the frame rather than just kind of being either in full shadow or in full light the whole time. Yeah, I'm happy with those. We can delete the rest of that guy. Whoops. Whoops. Oopsies. Whoopsies. Oh, yeah, dude. Revealing. Oh, no, but this is where we're seeing. This is where we started to see that weird flickering going on in the graphic on the billboards or on the uh, poster boards. In the center of the frame right there, no bueno. If you're doing a beauty reel, uh, let's not include graphical errors. And <laughs> try to block it. Try to block it with the escalator. I don't know if we need that shot. We don't need that shot. Let's just get rid of it. I'll put it with the rejects. I'll keep it, but I'll put it with the rejects. Do 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 Get back here. You have been uh, canceled, sir. Okay, and where are we on to next? Pull back as the guy walks out. And then we are on to the dam. Oh yeah. And we are waiting for these blood bugs again to create some dynamic movement in the frame. Oh, dude, that looks great as that one is just skimming across the water. Which is what they always pretty much do, so. Nah, dude, okay, I got too low here. That first section was great. This is just getting... Mm, little too low and now we're tilted up okay see so yeah, i rise back up that's good mm. 
That didn't feel as good as that first section. Yeah, why even mess with it? If that first section was good, let's just grab it. I set the frame. I start the movement. No, we want it right there. As the as the uh, blood bug turns and starts to fly towards the dam itself, like that. Yep. Because that again, if we're introducing the viewer to this new area, any kind of movement towards to emphasize the introduction is great. In my opinion, yeah, and that's perfect. Yeah, man, those audio audio transitions are going to help out so much. We got our death claw now. Oof. That's right. The Get myself in safety. Is that the only clip we got of the Death Claw? I guess there's like a second in there we might be able to use. Like from here. I don't know. This clip might not go in anywhere. Nah. Nah. Right before I exit photo mode is probably all we're going to get out of that. But I, but this is this is going this is going into the this is going to the junk pile. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit nowhere, I don't think. If that's the only clip we have of the death claw. Uh it's omitted you will be omitted sir even though that is very closely related to this area that that little uh, that little random event spot is closely related to this area but it, it doesn't really work with the rest of it I don't think Okay, we have that bloat fly flying across the top of the dam. What's all this audio going on at the end of the clip? <laughs> Gunfire. So that's all useless. Meow. Pear. Boom. So let's just grab it in a spot where in that bloat fly will be somewhat visible flying across. So for me, yeah, like right about there where it leaves the lower key area of the foliage into the brighter foliage there. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Three one thousand, four one thousand. Let's just keep that, and then we are on to the Dalisads. Dalisads. Remember Dalisads flag. I think eventually we got it to reveal the actual sunrise coming up. Yeah, like that. Super cool. That's where we're gonna want it. Looks like we have two different versions. Start it there. Sweet. And And then where's the next reveal we had? Just we'll compare them. Looks like maybe I do a pullback and a pan. 
on this one. Yep. Right about there. Just keep these side by side. Not much of a difference. Uh, I guess I'd say this first one feels like it's a little less hot in the bright areas of the sky. But then the second one, the audio, because that whatever, I think it sounds like a bloat fly or a blood bug. is further away so we don't have as as loud of a buzzing but that's not really an issue because i might not use any of this audio at all i might just record some straight audio or just include uh an entire audio segment from one scene so that we're not getting those audio transitions or we don't have to deal with audio transitions I use the second shot just in case. Yeah, I like that second that second version. I would I would give it two. So let's just delete that first one and the end of that second clip. And then we just have the sun revealing itself from behind our flag. Looks like I might need to extend that clip a little bit, but we'll figure that out. And then we got Dali Sad's campground. Is there anything good in here? These gulpers? Anything good for me, gulpers? I don't know about that. Maybe there's right about here as the gulper walks over and we're pushing across those mutated fern flowers. That's kind of cool as the, the two gulpers cross over each other. That's about as much as I would want. How many more clips do we have? Yeah, let's get through. So we're not gonna, yeah, we're definitely not gonna finish the entire edit tonight, but let's get through creating each segment from each one of these because that'll be relatively fast. Um, and then next time we edit this, we'll add transitions, add titles, and be done with the sucker and have a little Meyer montage ready to go. Nice little shot of this beautiful uh, uh, possum scout building. Mm. Ideally, you know, we would have shot all of these clips. Also, drink water. Told me to do that 30 minutes ago. I'll drink. Oh, wait. Maybe I did at that time, but I'm seeing again now, so I'm going to drink more water now. Um, ideally, we would have shot every single one of these clips at a prime moment of the day when the lighting would have been absolutely beautiful. Um, but we can't really hang out at each zone through each day and night cycle because that would take forever. So as we adventure, we're just kind of just kind of hitting it as we get it. Uh, 
There's that bloat fly up there, but it doesn't really seem to want to do much. I would like a section when the bloat fly is doing something, but it really doesn't do much. I guess right here, as we pull back, let's try that. That's yeah, not too bad. Okay. We got that movement in there. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. And the camera movement is smooth. I'll take it. I'd buy that for a dollar. And we got our gulpers over at the actual campground itself. Oh, that was a cool shot, dude, as he crouches down and then turns around. But I got it. We had to do it after. See, I, I try to ch adjust the actual camera movement so we don't want the weird change in camera direction. We want it to be just like that. Perfect. Although how far does this clip go and what else happens? <sighs> Nothing fun. Perfect. And then we have, again, the actual. Uh, the little beeping of the actual workshop activator. What do you I should know what that thing is called. I don't think I've ever had a name for it, though. The workshop. activation mechanism. I don't know what to call it. I don't know. It's got to be a name for it. Oh yeah. And here's where we realize that the wavering of those, uh, those, those, those little bushes as they're wavering in the wind left to right, as we, if we move the camera left to right in conjunction with that wavering, it feels more like a staccato movement of the actual camera which it's not. I'm moving very smooth. But when we move and those are moving in the same direction back and forth, it feels very strange. And that's when I start to do the push in through the grass. I don't know if I even like this shot very much. I'll keep one segment of it, but might end up being something we remove. Completely. And I don't like it how the blades of grass just kind of appear in the frame as we're pushing through them. That doesn't look too good. I feel like that first section was like the... Like right there, I, I'm pretty happy with that. We're moving opposite the direction that the bl wind is blowing those grass blades. Although it still kind of feels kind of staccato-y. Nope. So maybe actually let's take it here when we don't have those tall blades of grass in the frame. And we're just coming around the structure itself. I'm happy with that. Get rid of the rest. Bye-bye. I can bring you back if I want to. Ooh. That's not a bad shot right there as the gulper's walking towards us. Hmm. 
So let's take that. I kind of like how he dips down first. I'm glad I grabbed that as he was doing that behavior. Just that was pretty cool. Let's see, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. That's fine. And then we have the actual Dalasadza structure, the Dalasadza wilderness structure, the other part of it at least. Also that, let's see, where's that flag clip? This is supposed to be associated with this building, not the actual campground. This is what I'm saying about we'll get th we'll get this all edited together and then we can move each section to its position where it's supposed to be. Whoops. Mm, the only thing that's weird here is that... Oh, actually, we just have to... We'll just have to put these clips in opposite order, I'd think. Yeah, that push in right there is that's gonna be it. That's gonna be it. After we get past the telephone wire in the top left corner. Never right about here. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand ish. I'm sorry, I'm counting to five now because I did realize that those transitions will eat into the actual clip time. So better to have a couple more seconds or at least one more second on the clip for that transition to occur. I feel like these two gulpers didn't really behave for us, although that would go really well. Like if we started it here. It actually would go really well back to back with the other gulper shot. Let's see if we can put those side by side as the gulper turns around and approaches the camera, if we cut to the reverse, it might look like a good transition watch. Okay, dips down, walks towards us. We cut to the other side. Eh. I'll keep it for now, but it did feel, again, maybe with the audio, audio crossfade and, and the cross dissolve for the video might feel better. Do we want the shot of this bench? I don't know. Oh, there's that there's that audio cue I was talking about. Or one of those audio cues. Like, we can't use that audio. Yeah, it was not centered on the bench. Yeah, come down so we can have a zero tilt. Yep, there we go. Then maybe I do a push in, tilt down. Ooh, I do like revealing the, the broken top of that little overhang. So let's actually get it maybe like right about there as we're revealing a little bit more of that delicious texture on the top of that thing. Boom. Dunzo. We got these shots kind of like raking across this broken area in the roof. 
I do very much like portals like that, looking through any type of object into another scene. I I do like that format, but I don't know how well it's going to work here. And there's not really a consistency in doing that in many of these shots. So this one might not fit in, but I still, I still like it. I think. I feel like this one was a struggle. Mm. Let's just watch the whole thing. Mm, might end up being a reject. I don't know where that's going to fit. I just don't feel... Maybe right there, that last little segment where we're not seeing the entirety of the of the roof, but we can we can look in and see those chairs getting just just raked with that beautiful light coming in from the broken ceiling. I'll just I'll keep that in there for now, but I do want to say this might not fit at all. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand. Keep that sucker. And then we have our beautiful Harper's Ferry Bridge. What I we really needed a wider shot of this bridge. Also, we didn't shoot Harper's Ferry all that much, at all. We want to keep it when we have that close object on the left, though, because that's going to add to the feeling of the camera movement as that's the closest object to the frame. Oof, did I change my camera speed there? Hang on. I do, but there's enough at the beginning of the clip that it doesn't uh, affect us. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, or five one thousand. I know how to count all the way to fifty-five, and then this can be our ender zone of enders. Although I do a pull back here, which is a more fitting for the end of a. Yeah, right here. I want to see those rocks come into view. Boom. Yep. Like that. And then that'll be our exit. Let's start it right as those rocks come in and then it'll be a very nice slow crossfade out. Or fade out, not crossfade, just fade out. That's crossfading from the, the picture to black, so you know, crossfade. But you know what I mean. Oof, end of the clip right there. Do we do a better... Now revealing again, coming back, but we never quite close off the frame as much as we did in that first segment. And that's where I'd like to end... As the movement stops, boom. Okay. So we have all our clips cut down. Let's just do, before I wrap up, because I do want to wrap up, um, let's just do, we'll do a view, a viewing of our rough cut. This is the roughest of cuts. The first thing we had was what would be considered the, the rough assembly all the clips in their in their entirety just laid out, and unfortunately they weren't in chronological order, which they should have been, which would have been ideal, but that's fine. And now we have our first draft rough edit, which is still very basic. We have to reposition all of these segments together into one one cohesive montage because they're all kind of they're all out of out of order still. Each area. Um, here's what we will do. Let's just add one cross dissolve in the front. That's what we can do. 
just so that we can see at least the intro close to what we're going to want it to be. And we can also add another gap at the front um, so we can actually go from black to the transition itself. Paul, you haven't been streaming for like 20 minutes because it cut out. What are you doing? Okay. Here, wait. Let's actually we'll get this first black gap. And I will add titles. to. They'll say like the Meyer before we actually go in there. Okay, uh, I'm going to go into full screen. I don't know if this actually it should work, right? Full screen playback. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got so far. Beautiful. Again, it's going to be, the transitions are going to be very jarring because there's no audio fade and no uh, cross dissolve. That clip might not quite fit. Might need to take that out. That one's great, though. Yep. Again, these might not all end up in there, and they might be out of order. So, yeah, because those this, the sloth, we want the sloth to have a consistency of movement and direction. Yeah, the that the the crab might not end up in there. That just felt kind of out of place. There's that flickering sign up there. I didn't notice that when we were cutting that. That's gonna have to leave. That's gonna have to go away. We only really want two to the maximum three, I'd like to say, of each zone. So we have some options of each one, at, at least at several of these locations. Yeah, we have to decide on one of those interior Galleria shots at some point. These might have to be reversed. Feels kind of weird going from the sunset lighting into that, but maybe it's okay. Those gulper shots could be put together. I don't know why I left that one gulper shot there. It's going to add order. Yeah, these do the campground shots, these all look like they could be re uh, reoriented. Yeah, all these dolly sods can be reorganized a little bit. And you know what? Not too shabby, dude. I think for the first time we did this. I mean, again, this isn't the final deal. Um, but currently, what are we at time-wise on this montage? In its entirety, we're looking at... It's three minutes, and it will be cut down. So that's about where I'd want it to be. Between... Probably one and a half to two and a half minutes is going to be ideal for this type of thing. So I'm pretty happy with what we have. We're going to cut that down quite a bit more, but for our first attempt at doing this, I'm pretty happy with how that how that worked out. Did it all look okay? I hope so. And again, we're going to have to do this. We're, we're going to have to finish this up at another time. But I'm pretty happy about that. There's a couple shots in there we'll take out. A couple things we'll reorganize. There's a couple clips we need to decide on. Like this, the interior of the Galleria. Obviously, there's like five of those. 
here actually we did a hundred percent determine that this first one with the flickering that flickering poster is not okay to me so that's going that's going the way of the dinosaur which is to say that it's never been lost because we put it at the end of the timeline because you should never lose your fucking dinosaur as i like to say yeah we'll just keep that in there one more final thing and then i'd like to say that's a good spot that's a good spot to edit uh or end the edit very very good very good first run through we might have actually gotten much closer to finishing had we not needed to reorganize shit but that the the bummer of the real bummer of of the way the PlayStation's tagging these files it's just giving me an inconsistency that I do not enjoy so I apologize a p a u l o j i s um, but pretty cool, dude. I'm pretty stoked on that. So next time, like I said, we will, uh, we'll finish that up. I don't know if we'll do it next week or not. Um, depending on, depending on what the freak I want to do next week. Um, we might do this again or we might actually shoot some actual photos. We might actually do some, some standard photography type stuff. But uh, either way, hope that was fun and enjoyable for all of you. Hope it was entertaining and educational and all that, which I always try to uh, recognize that I'm not educating. I'm not an educator. I'm merely just creating some cool stuff that I hope you think is cool as well. Um, so yeah, thank you all for hanging out. Really appreciate uh, your love and support. Hope that was an, an interesting new format. This is, the again, first time we've done these video montage edits. Um, and uh, it's a work in progress. We're going to do this more, and we'll just evolve our process as we go along. We'll get better and better video clips as we do this more. So I'm happy with that. I hope you're happy with it. Uh, I really, again, really appreciate it. You all hanging out. Check out all the socials that we got. If you enjoyed this this kind of thing, you like this image capture, image editing, creativity type stuff in these games that we play, eh, give us a shout on any of these social media platforms. Also, definitely check out our Discord. Uh, we can stay in touch when we're not streaming. Also, for this game specifically, we are working on, it's in its infancy, but we're working on a website dedicated to the image capture that we've uh, built on in this game. And that's our Pro Snap Camera Club website. So keep that on your radar. If Fallout 76 specifically is your thing, the Pro Snap Camera Club website is where we will uh, keep all of this information gathered. Uh, but... Any of those, any of those uh, options will pretty much keep you in tune with what we're doing here. So, um, thank you all again. I can't say that enough. I really cannot say that enough. I really appreciate everybody hanging out and being part of this, making it happen. I would not do this without all of you. So, thank you all. Um, I would rate the stream. I felt pretty good. The fact that nothing really fucked up, which is great. Anytime I'm trying something new, like we did tonight it's always very stressful that something might go wrong or I set something up wrong and it sounds like everything looked okay and sounded okay. Thank you. Back some more. Thank you. Um, oh shit. Is the chat staying there here on this, on this one too, that I'm, I might need to change that. Actually, you know what? That's not bad either. Is it bad that the chat stays there when I'm on the screen like this? Maybe that's a good thing. You don't need I mean, There's nothing over here that needs to be really clear. Right. So we're fine. But that's funny that changing it, um, changing it on the other scene seems to affect all of the scenes that I have the chat applied to. So that's good to know because I don't necessarily want the chat permanently on screen during the, the gameplay streams because that's just cluttering up what we got. Um, either way, I'm pretty happy. With what we got today, oh, it's fine. Okay, cool, sweet, 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 sweet. Yeah, here it's fine. 
might adjust the size a little bit. Actually, I don't know. You guys like to see what people say, right? So the size is probably good, good a little bit larger. Um, either way, let's do, I'll do seven Argus, four, five, six, seven, and two Doritos. Doritos, get into the crunch. Uh, they, they did not sponsor. Why would Doritos sponsor this? Why would, why would you? <laughs> I'm, I agree with your lack of, of, of sponsoring this so far. But eventually, maybe Doritos will be a part of what we do. Does Doritos care about image capture? Eh, maybe. All they really care about is crunching on chips. Uh, anyway, okay. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, what else we got? That's about it. Take care. Take pictures. Don't lose your dinosaur. Very much appreciate all the love and support. I'll be back at some point this weekend. I'm going to test out some new headphones. These aren't new, but these have been my streaming headphones when we're here in the studio. And I've been using my PlayStation headphones when we're streaming off camera. And I'm just doing a, what I call what a, a couch stream when I'm just chilling and playing games. I've been using my PlayStation branded headphones. I'm going to try this other pair of headphones that I have that I've been using for the stream that might have better audio quality from my end. I don't really care what the game sounds like for me, but I care about how my dialogue sounds for you. So we're going to test that out. Plan to do that at some point this weekend. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or Sunday, but I hope to see you all then. It's just going to be a fun gameplay session uh, of whatever type. Haven't decided, but I hope to see you then. If not, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you all for hanging out. I really appreciate y'all being here and being a part of this makes my night special hope i can add to your enjoyment of your evening uh snack you all I'll throw a snack out there snack you all three exclamations enjoy your rest of the evening people's uh, goodbye